get started with this. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. If you're new to your Bible, go eat pork chops. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. That's the way that I remember it. If you want to get spiritual, God's power and electric company, but we are a calorie chapel, so anything with food helps me to remember Scripture. When I was... uh, uh, when I was in San Diego, my home church, uh, we had a mountain biking ministry. And one day we were out riding in a canyon and I noticed a family that was picking this, this, this beautiful bouquet of pretty leaves. And as we got closer, I spotted that those pretty leaves looked a lot like <laughs> poison oak, right? Poison oak. So we rode up to the family and our distant eyesight proved correct that uh, this woman and her children were holding this big 12-inch, 14-inch bouquet of poison oak. And uh, we told her that, uh, that maybe you shouldn't be holding that. And then it finally registered what she and her children were holding could harm them, and they threw them down immediately. Now, she, uh, she said that they were just out for some family fun, and she and her children were, were just gathering these beautiful red, pink, and, and, uh, and green leaves uh, all morning. And before we left, we gave her the instructions on what to do about uh, treating poison oak. And as we rode off, the Lord impressed on my heart that some things, some things may appear to be fun and beautiful and harmless, but can in reality be extremely dangerous to us. And the devil, you realize this, the devil is extremely crafty. Do you know that? He's pretty good at deceiving people. He's pretty crafty and deceitful when it comes to enticing us to sin. And that's why important, it's important for us to... To know God's Word, in particular, these verses found here in Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verses 10 and 11, verses 10 and 11, and, uh, and read that with me. Verses 10 and 11. It says, finally, what? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on, right? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And again, Paul exhorts us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, we aren't to be ignorant of the devices, the, the schemes and the trickeries, the wiles of the devil. You know, the devil understands this, that people don't trip over mountains. You ever tripped over a mountain? (laughs) Nobody ever trips over a mountain. He tries to subtly trip us up in areas where we aren't paying enough attention. And on this topic of paying attention, I'm going to spend the next uh, 55 minutes or so to give you an overview on the origins uh, of this internationally, you realize that Halloween, it's an internationally celebrated day. We're going to look to see what, what God says on this topic, and then we're all going to be left to make our own conclusions if this is a productive environment for families to participate in. So before I get started, we're going to be going through a lot of scripture. Maybe you got out of the house this morning without having a Bible, but if you need it's way to go. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's pray. Father, this morning, as we just sang, (laughs) we didn't sing, I surrender some. (laughs) We sang, I surrender all. And that's what you desire. We are to love you with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, and all our strength. And that means that we let all of your word 
be the absolute authority in our lives. So, God, for your glory, would you help us to see the wisdom of what Christians should participate in and what we shouldn't? And, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, God, I pray that you would illuminate that fact to our hearts. Amen. Amen. Now, before you think that, uh, that I'm just some killjoy, and, uh, and uh, most of you know that I wasn't raised in the church. I didn't come to know the Lord until I was 32 years old, so uh, uh, I have quite a history of doing things the wrong way. I played first string for the devil for 32 years of my life without, it, without ever knowing it. Nobody ever witnessed to me. But then as soon as I realized that I had an opportunity to surrender my life to the God who loves me and loved me enough to lay his life down for me, when I gave him my heart, I gave him all of my heart. And if you read the fine print, that's what he expects of every person, right? We have to lay down all of our heart. So that means our way of thinking. His ways are higher, right, than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, are his ways than our ways, and, and uh, his thoughts than our thoughts. So he knows what's best. And when it comes to doing things the way that uh, he desires, I, I, want, I want to be blessed by the Lord. I don't want there to be anything in my life that would hinder his hand of favor. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay as close to purity and as far away from liberty as possible. There are things that we have liberty to do. But I'm not going to use that as an excuse. What I'm going to do is I'm going to serve the Lord. And I'm going to encourage you to do that uh, as well. With, uh, I'm going to serve the Lord without an asterisk. You know what I mean? Not going to, uh, except for, I'm going to serve the Lord except for. See the asterisk. There isn't any asterisk. My goal is to serve him with everything. So, for many years of my life, um, there were two days in the year that I really looked forward to, New Year's Eve and Halloween, because both those days meant one thing to me, party, right? Party, right? Oh, want the blackmail photo? Here, let me give you this. You'll love this, right? Okay. Extra points if you could figure out who I who I am in there. Now, when uh, I was in my mid-20s, long before I got saved, I, uh, I enjoyed one Halloween just a little bit too much, and a couple of my friends and I were on our way home from a, uh, a Halloween costume party, and due to my overconsumption of differing alcoholic beverages, I drove my Z car uh, off an embankment and crashed. Well, we were immediately taken to the hospital to get checked out, and I'm feeling like a knucklehead already because I'm wasted, and I just crashed my car, and as we walk in the emergency room door, I remember our attire. I remember what we were wearing. Hmm. Here's your visual. One of my friends was dressed like a pirate. I was dressed like a pirate, and my other friend was dressed like a pimp. So here we are, walking into the hospital, to the emergency room, two pirates and a pimp. <laughs> Packed with people. I was so embarrassed. You would think that humiliating encounter should have been enough to keep me from the future Halloween involvement, and uh, if that wasn't enough, if that wasn't enough, that incident followed me for years because people would say things to me like, like hey, Greg, uh, Halloween's coming up. What are you going to wear to the hospital this year? <laughs> well, that's really funny, right? Yeah, not. But the next year, there I was again, Halloween Central. Now, uh, I've been involved in Halloween since I was, uh, since I was a kid, you know, uh, I'd gone trick-or-treating as a cowboy, as an astronaut, as Zorro, Zorro, Superman. I was Superman. And uh, as an adult, I usually went as a, as a, uh, as a pirate or Native American, you know, because it's obvious, right? 
Uh, well, the reason I say that, in case you couldn't figure out where I was, I'm this guy right here, you know, like, come on now. You ain't, you ain't fooling anybody. Where's Stephanie? Where's Steve? I'm not fooling anybody anyway. Lakota? No, 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 no. Uh, no, but uh, I, would, I, would, I would either go as a pirate or as a, as a, as a Native American or as a matador. Not this kind of matador. Very, quite possibly the ugliest car ever made. This kind of matador. The guy that fights the bulls. Now, uh, let's be honest, I look pretty menacing there, don't I? Hmm. What bull wouldn't be quivering in his little hooves when facing that? And the, uh, the other, I'm actually bullfighting with my, uh, with my dog, Magnum. My first Rottweiler right there. So, in my 25 years or so of celebrating Halloween, never once did I consider or was told about its origins of Celtic, pagan, demonic roots. Dating back thousands of years, the Celts lived in what is now Ireland and and Scotland, Great Britain and, and France. Among the Celtic people was an elite class known as Druids, who were basically, they were basically the religious priests of the day, and they had elaborate pagan religious festivals and rituals, including their fire festival called Samhain. Samhain. And uh, they usually observed that around, uh, around harvest time, uh, and harvest time, October 31st, was to mark the Celtic New Year. At this large festival, animal and human sacrifice was practiced. They constructed, they constructed these huge wooden effigies known as wicker men and sometimes filled them with animals. Sometimes they would fill them with prisoners that they had captured from other nations or other tribes, uh, criminals, and... Uh, and uh, they would use them as sacrifices to druid deities, and they would light them on fire. Those are the origins of the Burning Man festival that, uh, that they hold today in Nevada, and it's still practiced by Wiccans today. At Samhain, huge bonfires were stoked with the bones of these sacrifices, so that's where we get our term bonfire, wow. bone fire. Now, the Celts believed in nature worship and reincarnation and magic and divination and the, the transmigration of the soul, so each year on this one night, the barrier between the natural world and the supernatural was removed, and the spirits of the dead were able to move freely among human beings. Now, Samhain was the most solemn and important night in the Celtic New Year, and Samhain, Samhain was the god they worshipped, who was also known as the Lord of the Dead. The Lord of the Dead. Bonfires were set on hilltops to frighten away evil spirits, and these Pagans would put on grotesque masks and dance around these bonefires, again, to scare off the evil spirits who had uh, access again to the world on that particular night. They would also carve out faces in turnips and potatoes, and they would put a candle inside to ward off unwanted familiar spirits. Does that sound familiar? Most witches, if you if you ever witness to anybody and you've ever witnessed to a witch, they will they will tell you that they are not Satan, uh, they're not Satanists or worshippers of the devil. They're like Wiccans, and they worship Mother Earth, and it's where many of the New Age belief systems come from. Most witches today celebrate Halloween as one of their four one of their four high holy days, and regard it as the great Sabbath, or sometimes it's even referred to as black Sabbath. Anybody, any, where's my ex-headbangers? Any of my ex-black Sabbath headbangers? Okay. One person honest enough to say that they used to listen to 
Black Sabbath, Ozzy. Keep praying for Ozzy to get saved. Wouldn't that be incredible? Ozzy Osbourne got saved. Hmm. Now, uh, to many Satanists, it's known as the high holy day of Satanism. This is uh, a day that people practicing witchcraft believe that their powers are stronger and more powerful than any other day of the year. And since it's believed that the veil between the living and the dead are at its thinnest on that particular day, many witches attempt to communicate with the dead through divination and seances. Some claim that Wicca is the fastest growing religion in our nation. So it's wise for all Christians to have at least some understandings of its dangers. Now, so how did Halloween become a tradition practiced by so many not involved in these godless cults? It's a great question. I'm glad you all asked. After, after the Roman Catholic Church brought Christianity to the Celtic peoples in the 7th century, some of their traditional folk customs were Christianized, right? Christianized in, in 835 AD. Pope Gregory IV, no relation, <laughs> moved the church's, uh, just my disclaimer there, moved the church's Feast of All Saints from May to November 1st to replace the observance of Samhain. Now, All Saints Day, still observed today by many Christians, honored believers who had died, and the night before featured a sacred vigil in the church and became known as All Hallows Eve, Halloween, okay? The modern tradition of the way Americans celebrate this day originated in the early 20th century, less than 100 years ago. You can, you can actually blame it on my relatives when the Scotch and the, the Irish immigrants started moving to this country in the 19th century. They brought their Halloween traditions with them, and by the turn of the century, this night had become an occasion for pranks and mischief. Vandals would go through the night. They'd soak people's windows. They'd overturn houses. They would, they would pull gates off their hinges and these pranks were playful and said to be the work of witches and ghosts, but by the 1920s, the damage to people's neighborhoods was increasing. Now, to counteract Halloween vandalism, community clubs like the Boy Scouts began to organize alternatives that were safe and, and more fun, and children were encouraged to go to door-to-door -door and receive treats from homeowners and merchants, keeping the troublemakers away. And by the 1930s, the practice was very popular nationwide, and kids started saying their Halloween mantra of trick or treat, right? Trick or treat. This trick or treat understanding also linked to the early superstitions that if you weren't friendly towards the spirits on the day of the dead, they would do what? Play a trick on you. They went from carving out potatoes and turnips to pumpkins stemming from the uh, Celtic tradition of warding off these, uh, these evil spirits. And the reason for the costumes, they date back to the early bonfires, the dancing around them with, with uh, uh, these demonic masks, these evil masks, which leads us to the modern Halloween tradition that we uh, have today, where did you know that in the United States, the observance, the yearly observance of Halloween amounts to almost $9 billion a year. Seven out of 10 people participate in this, spending an average of $86 on costumes, candy, food items, uh, party supplies, greeting cards, tours of so-called, you know, ha uh, haunted houses and other forms of entertainment. And dig this, a half a billion dollars spent every year on pet costumes. <laughs> it is one thing to put a little sweater on your little frigid chihuahua, right? 
It's another thing to embarrass them like this. Can you imagine the conversations that they would have? I hate my owner. Right. I bet you that's what they'd be saying. Hate my owner. So with that very condensed summary, I can, I can see all those little bubbles going on over your heads asking, okay, okay, Greg. So what should the Christian do with Halloween? Again, you guys are asking some excellent questions. As Christians, here's the bottom line. Turn your Bibles. Romans chapter 12. Turn your Bibles. Romans chapter 12. For the Christian, bottom line, in anything we do should depend on what God says pertaining to the matter. And a great place to start, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Now, I put it up on the screen in the, uh, in the NLT, but I wanted you, regardless of your translation, I want you to highlight it, underline it in your Bibles. Great couple of verses to memorize. Now, look at the screen, please. Read this with me, everybody. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And so, dear brothers and sisters, everybody, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind God will what? Well, accept when you think of what uh, he has done for you. Is it too much to ask? Okay. Is it too much to ask? Keep going. Don't copy the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect His will really is. There's a lot of things we feel comfortable doing before we get saved, but transformation leads to regeneration of our minds. The goal is to think like Jesus. Isn't that your goal? I want to think like Jesus. God desires and expects his kids to behave differently than the world. Have you figured that one out? We are to lovingly encourage and influence the world, not allow the world to do what? Influence us. Colossians Chapter 2, verse 8, don't let anyone lead you astray with empty philosophy and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the evil powers of this world and not from Christ. Again, we are to adopt God's thinking process and not the human thinking of this world. Here's, uh, Here's an example for you. Every year in San Diego, there's a community bike ride known as Midnight Madness to benefit children groups in the area, and thousands of people participate in this 20-mile midnight ride around Point Loma and and Shelter Island and Old Town and and downtown San Diego and Harbor Island, And, and some riders dress up in costumes or just wear their pajamas, and some decorate their bikes. But most people are just normal, and they just go for the bike ride part. So my, my friends and I were, were there one, uh, one midnight madness to share the gospel. During the ride, we shared the gospel with two girls wearing costume. One was dressed like a bird, and the other one was dressed like a witch. So one's dressed like a bird, one's dressed like a witch. So we asked if they knew the Lord. And the one wearing the witch costume said, yes. Said yes. And she said that she went to a Calvary chapel. (laughs) She said that she went to a Calvary. So my friend asked her if he thought it was odd that a Christian would feel comfortable dressing up like a witch. And apparently, she loved that question so much, she lit him up. She lit him up and then deflected, saying, Well, I wasn't expecting to talk about Jesus on a bike ride. (laughs) So then the person in our group with the biggest mouth said this. (laughs) This is what I said. I said, uh, (laughs) I said, uh, I said, well, if you're a Christian, what better topic is there to discuss with anyone anytime you have an opportunity to? 
Mm. It was then that her non-Christian friend said that she didn't want to talk about religion, and they both just took their little bikes and, and, uh, and walked away. As they left, I thought to myself, how tragic that a professing Christian wouldn't want to talk about Jesus, wouldn't feel comfortable talking about Jesus, but would feel comfortable wearing a witch costume. Was she a Christian? You know, God only knows for sure. At best, it's it's an example of compromise. At worst, it's an indicator of not having a personal relationship with Jesus. And, And the wise Christian... Look at the person next to you and say, I want to be a wise Christian. Just look at somebody and say, I want to be a wise Christian. Everybody plays. I want to be a wise Christian. And then say, I hope you want to be a wise Christian too, right? So the wise Christian, right? The wise Christian does their best to filter their decisions through what the Word of God says. So once again, I can see those little invisible bubbles over your heads, and then some of you are saying, well, who cares? Who cares what Greg says, right? Who cares what Greg says? Maybe he's just witchophobic. Maybe that's it. Maybe he's just witchophobic, and, and I want to know. I want to know. You're thinking, I want to know. What does God say on this topic? That's the most important thing. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Let's do this. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 13. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who conjures spells or a medium or spiritualists or one who calls up the dead for all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. That's what the Bible says. This is what else the Bible says. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31. Give some regard to medium. Oh, that's right. It says, give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord, your God. (laughs) Caffeine's kicking in, right? Good job, sister. Micah 5.12. Micah, where's Micah? It's in here somewhere, right? Hiding foot is out now. What are you calling me out? Because your name's Micah, okay. 5.12. I will cut off sorceries from your hand, and you shall have no soothsayers. Remember that God rebukes King Saul for him hanging out with a witch at Endor, right? Let's keep these things in mind. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. And when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards who whisper and mutter... Should not a people seek their God? One thing that you're going to hear me say quite often is that you can't dwell in light and darkness at the same time. You can't dwell in light and darkness at the same time. Why would a Christian want to dwell in darkness? It makes makes no sense. Galatians. Chapter 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I've told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Here's the point. God is not silent on this topic. And when God speaks, the Christian is to listen. And I've discovered over the years that that most people, Christian or not, once they have been informed about the truth of this day, willingly stop practicing it and definitely don't want their children 
involved in it because they conclude that whether a family participates with full knowledge of what this day really is or just out of naivete, this is still a day whose intention is to glorify Satan. And even though uh, an individual may personally conclude it being harmless, police across the nation will tell you that violence escalates on this particular night. They have found uh, makeshift uh, sacrificial altars with mutilated carcasses of, of small animals. You know, a lot of pets go missing on Halloween, so I would encourage you to keep your pets in, in the house, right? People who come out of Satanism tell of how their covens would meet specifically on this night to invoke the devil against pastors and against churches and against Christians who are choosing purity over liberty. I have a, uh, uh, a couple-minute video I'm going to show you here of an ex-Satanist concerning his insights on Halloween. Well, should Christians celebrate Halloween? I recently caught it with John Ramirez, and he had a strong warning for believers. Tell us a little bit about where you were in relation to Satanism and worshiping the devil. Well, 25 years, uh, eight years old, boy, little boy, eight years old, demon church, learned being trained by high-ranked devil worship with warlock and spiritual witches. I was being trained all the way to the age of 35, sold my soul to the devil, got married on Halloween, had a demonic wedding on Halloween. I baptized my daughter to the dark side at the age of 11. So that was my whole entire life. I mean, I, I breathed, ate, and slept witchcraft. Knowing what you came from and what you used to do, you're pretty... Um discouraged that you see Christians celebrating Halloween. Why? I, 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 I don't know how you can cheat on God. I don't know how you can cheat on the Lord Jesus Christ because I don't see Satan as coming on Good Friday and coming hanging out with us, right? You know, I got married on Halloween and had a demonic wedding. Why would you put your kids, your family in a demonic altar? But people say it's just fun, candy, kids are having costumes on. I'm Tom LeVayne, set. Out of his mouth, you know, he, 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 used to, he, he was the ruler of the church of Satan, mm -hmm. right? Out of his mouth, he said, I want to thank every Christian parent for allowing their child to celebrate Halloween one time a year. The devil's holiday. Sounds to me like this former Satanist understands what really goes on during this time. And maybe we should listen to what he has to say. Now, speaking of what people who are witches and Satanists say, here are, uh, here are a few quotes. This is on the discussion of Sam Hain. This is the witch's new year and the primary Sabbath or Sabbath from which all others flow. That's from uh, uh, Silver Raven Wolf in her book, Teen Witch. Halloween. Halloween is one of the four major Sabbaths celebrated by the modern witch, and it is far, uh, and it is by far the most popular and important of the eight that are observed. Witches regard Halloween as their New Year's Eve, celebrating it with sacred rituals. Uh, Garina Dunwich, the pagan book of Halloween. As uh, Mr. Ramirez had just mentioned, Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan and author of the Satanic Bible, writes, after one's own birthday, the two major Satanic holidays are Walpurgisnacht and Halloween. That's directly from the Satanic Bible. And then Satanic High Priestess Blanche Barton on the Church of Satan website years ago she praises Halloween and says this, Halloween gives even the most mundane people the opportunity to taste wickedness for one night. They have a chance to dance with the devil. So even though we might not consider this day any big deal, there are obviously those who take this very seriously. And again, from firsthand experience, I have uh, another couple minute video from, uh, from an ex-witch. So Halloween is kind of a taboo subject for Christians as far as talking about not celebrating it. So as a witch, when I celebrated Halloween, Halloween is a high holy day for Satanists and witches alike. 
Um, in the Bible, God speaks very clearly about not being involved in paganism, witchcraft, mediums, um, sacrificing children, and things of that nature. But what many people don't know is that Halloween is a high holy day for Satanists and witches and other occult members. Uh, Anton LeBay says that Halloween is the third most important um, holiday on their calendar. He, if you don't know, was the founder of the Church of Satan. He is now deceased. Uh, the Church of Satan is not deceased, though. It is alive and active. And um, Satanists actually love the fact that Christians celebrate Halloween. Now, I know a lot of Christians say that they don't celebrate the evil of Halloween, but the thing is, is that you really can't get away from the evil of Halloween. It is a day dedicated to Satan, evil, and death. Satanists and other occultists see it as a day, yes, of the dead and partying, but to them, that means um, human sacrifices, animal sacrifices, uh, ritual abuse such as beatings, and uh, also sexual abuse. I understand that you could dress up in costumes that you consider non-evil, such as princesses and superheroes and, and your favorite cartoon characters. But the fact is that I really want you to think about is that you can't separate yourself from the evil that Halloween is. To its very origins, Halloween is evil. And it is all based on celebrating other gods and goddesses, which, by the way, are demons in disguise. At this time of year, covens are very active, um, trying to place curses on different churches and different individuals, especially individuals like myself who would speak out against Halloween. Um, it's, a, it's very serious. I take Halloween very seriously. It grieves me to the core, to, to my bones, which with immense sadness that Christians participate in Halloween. It, it's not something for Christians. We are called to be the light of the world. We are called to step out of darkness. You know, as you just said, uh, we can't walk in light and in darkness at the same time. And on this topic of darkness, Halloween today has strongly become associated with the occult and the preoccupation with the dead, two influences that the Scripture and, uh, and the church have always warned against. Like I mentioned earlier, Wicca and witchcraft, Wicca and, and uh, witchcraft is growing quickly in our country, um, Pop culture uh, these days has made evil attractive. Have you noticed that? How many shows are on TV these days about evil stuff? And we watch them, you know? In the last couple of years, witch TV shows are everywhere, you know, reboots of Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Charmed and The Craft. Newer shows like American Horror Story and Discovery of Witches and Good Omens and Twilight or whatever the, uh, whatever the, the vampire or the zombie movie du jour might be. Uh, children are impressionable. Children are impressionable. And their curiosity often encourages them to check into many things that are intended to draw them away from God and to the enemy of their souls. Are most kids who participate in Halloween activities going to grow up to become a druidic priest, <laughs> you know, sacrificing animals and, and uh, humans to the Lord of the dead? Doubt it, right? Highly doubt it. Of course not. But I know this, the devil is crafty and will take a child's curiosity about Halloween in an internet search, and one presumed harmless click to a costume site can take them to a full-on occultic site. I'm a proponent. I'm a proponent of teaching kids the truth from a very, very early age. Uh, kids, are, kids are a lot... They have a lot more ability to learn about God at an early age than most parents give them credit for. 
I don't think it's too early to teach them what it means to be well-pleasing to the Lord. When it comes to matters of conscience, my, my encouragement has always been to allow 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 be your guide. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 21 and 22. Read it with me. What's it say? Prove some things. No, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. All appearance. All means all. That's all. All means, right? All appearance of evil. Now, this morning we've gone through some of the basic information concerning Halloween. I want to get to some very practical application for us all. Number one, the 11th commandment on this is thou shalt not fight over Halloween. (laughs) Thou shalt not fight over Halloween. That position is, uh, we're not the judge of anybody, right? Look at somebody, just as a reminder, look at somebody and say, I'm not your judge. Look at somebody else, look at the person next to you and say, I'm not your judge. You guys aren't playing right here. Lauren, help your kids, right? Yep, I'm not your judge. Still not playing. (laughs) Not your judge, right? But, but, one day we will all stand before the righteous judge and give an account for what we did. And you parents, guess one of the things that you were going to stand and give an account for? Your stewardship of those children that God has given you. Because guess what? Those kids belong to him. You are just stewards. You are just stewards of them for now. Now, I I, I realize that this isn't a simple discussion, especially because your children may have been allowed to be involved in Halloween activities in the past, and and they might be disappointed when you change your position on it this year because, because now you have a better understanding of what's really going on. Now, when it comes to what we would have our children participate in, This should always be the underlying question. This is the underlying question. What is God's best for your children? What is God's best for your children? Let me me again say, it's never never too early to train your children to discern good from evil. And as parents, we must be willing to ask the question, WWJD, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Would you, here's parents, would you ask Jesus to come and participate with you and Sam Hain? What would you do? Pack your bags, we're going on a guilt trip. I'm not trying to guilt trip anybody. I'm trying to give you biblical information that God isn't silent on this topic, and you're going to make your own decisions. I have no authority over you. I'm just helping, I'm trying to help you receive an incredible blessing from the Lord. And these, these practical things that we're learning about Halloween, they cross over into a lot of other areas that Christians have a tendency to compromise in. So you're going to be asking the Lord, what is best for my kids in a lot of these areas of their lives. Now, at some point, uh, as a Christian parent, you're going to have to explain to your children that due to our love for God, there are some activities that Christians should not participate in. You're the parent. And I know you think, well, well, when I participated in that when I was a kid, and it was just fun, and I'm having my kids participate in it now. Well, With knowledge comes responsibility. With knowledge comes responsibility. And I would hope that you would have already done your own research, parents, that you would have already done your own research on this long, long, long ago. But great, I've already spent money, you know. Okay, you spent money on whatever you have for Halloween this year. I'm going to give you a way to redeem some of that here in a moment. But here's the deal. The longer, the longer that a parent avoids that conversation, 
You, the parent, create confusion in the mind of your child. And I'll tell you this, I've talked to your kids. I've talked to kids that have gone through all this, and because their parents weren't honest with them about very, very simple things from the beginning, they develop a mistrust. And that's what the parents have created in their child. Be honest. Be honest with your child. There comes a day when you have to tell your kids that the Easter bunny isn't real. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh. There comes a day when you have to tell the kids that it was you who put those gifts under the Christmas tree. No. <laughs> Not some fat man in a red suit. Like most kids, they will one day ask why you didn't tell them the truth to begin with. Amen. I know it's a difficult topic. I know it is, but this will, this will benefit you in the long run. Hmm. There's never a good answer. Parents, there is never a good answer for that. There is never a good, well, I told you that there was a Santa, or I told you there was an Easter bunny. What? Oh, it's just cute. It's not cute. It's not cute. Christmas is not about a fat man in a suit. It's about Jesus. Amen. Easter is not about a little bunny that lays eggs. <laughs> Biology 101, right? Can't happen. Can't happen. It's about Jesus. And his resurrection from the dead. Halloween is a holiday originally designed to worship the enemies of Jesus. Is it sinking in here? Shouldn't be difficult. And then uh, here's the deal. Redeem the day. Redeem the day. The devil doesn't get a day. Amen. The Bible says <laughs> one person. Yeah. <laughs> the devil doesn't get a day. They all belong to the Lord. You don't get a day off. I don't get a day off from being a follower of, of Jesus. Redeem the day. Don't just bury your head on Halloween night and turn off the porch lights and, 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 and lock it. I know I'm speaking to the choir here. And you lock the doors and you pretend you're not home, just like when the Mormons come and knock at your, come and knock at your door. Talk to these kids. Open the door and talk to them. Give them some cookies and share the truth with them. Here's the deal. You can dress your kids up. You can dress your kids up in Bible character costumes and sit on your doorstep. And when other little munchkins stop by, give them candy, give them a Bible track, and have your child personally invite the neighbor's kid to come to church with an invite card. And if you're really that desperate to give a whole bunch of money to your dentist then go to Sam's Club and buy them a couple of big bags, jumbo bags of, uh, of candy to satisfy their, their sweet tooth. And that way you've checked everything off the list with no compromise and no having to make up some embarrassing story when the kids are older why you didn't tell them the truth from the beginning. Don't surrender this day. Redeem the day. Remember what Ephesians 5 tells us, make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Well, duh, October 31st, at least the way the world celebrates. So, you know, when I was in San Diego, God allowed me to oversee a huge Halloween alternative at uh, San Diego's largest amusement park right on the ocean, you know, in Mission Beach. How many of you have been to Belmont Park, okay? Been to Belmont Park. How many of you rode the, rode the coaster at Belmont Park? You guys deserve a medal. <laughs> you deserve a medal, and you probably need a tetanus shot, okay? Probably need a tetanus. It's like the oldest, you know, wooden roller coaster on the planet. But it's right there on Mission Beach, and, and we had live bands. We had drama teams. We had puppet shows. We had Bible costume contests. We had clowns. My pastor, Mike, preached. People got saved. People got saved. 
we had over 1,500 people come to a fun, family-oriented, safe environment. Okay, Greg, so what if we dress the kids like Bible characters up on Halloween and go out knocking on doors? This is what I say. No problema if you truly see this as an outreach and your intended goal is to hand every person at every door you knock on a Bible track and an invite card. Don't surrender this day to the devil. Redeem it. Redeem it. Um, if, that's, if, if that's your understanding of redeeming that day, then I say, let's all go trick-or-treating, but let's change the name. Let's call it godly greeting. Godly greeting, because time is fleeting to invite people to heaven's meeting. How about that? Right? Did that myself. You must be so proud. In this crazy age, I would also inspect carefully every piece of candy your child receives. And honestly, I just throw all that stuff away, drop 20 bucks, get them a big bag at, uh, at Sam's Club. And we know that that candy isn't... I, just, I hear about you guys sneaking in and stealing candy from your kids' bags. <laughs> Some kids even have it on video. Yeah? <laughs> Smart kids. Yeah? Now, with all that said, this may surprise you. But I think we should... We should, are you listening? That we should celebrate October 31st. I think we should. Are you, yep. What? He's railing on October 31st all this time. Is, hear me out. I think we should celebrate October 31st, but not because it's the Day of the Dead or even because it's the night before All Saints Day, but because something else happened on this day that is incredibly important to the Christian, something that all Christians should know, but few Christians do know. It was on October, right? It was on October 31st, 1517, when Martin Luther exposed the prevailing non-biblical teaching of the church of his day by nailing his famous 95-point theses uh, to the castle church door in Wittenberg, Germany, which started the movement known today as the Protestant Reformation. <laughs> I think Sally's the only one that's had her coffee here this morning, right? Yeah. yeah, the Protestant Reformation, one of the most important events in modern history, giving birth to the Protestant church, emphasizing that we are saved by grace through faith through faith, and that the just shall live by faith. Now, that's something to have a party about and a godly alternative to what the world separate, uh, celebrates on this day. As I, as I often mention, God has called his followers to be the, the light of the world, the light of the world. That means we do not hide our light from the world but we engage the world and we influence it uh, in as positive way as we can for Christ. Last verse for this morning. This is uh, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Read this with me. You, you, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get an amen? All right, I'll invite the worship team to come up and close us in a final song. You know, I, uh, I realize just like that ex-witch says, that this can be a touchy subject because many of you, maybe you've participated in this, uh, uh, in this day in the past. And I, I just say, what a, great, what a great year to celebrate something different. Amen. To celebrate something different. And what a great, what a, what a great time to not postpone 
telling your children the truth. I mean, I, I think you should do it from day one. No more of the Santa stuff. No more of the Easter Bunny stuff. We're Christians. We're not to conform to the pattern of this world in, in anything. Amen. And believe me, you, you can have a much better celebration than, uh, than, than you can explain about the greatest gift on Christmas. And on Easter, just redeem that day. And talk about how this is why, because they'll, they'll, they'll see all their classmates or, or they'll see other kids' friends celebrating this. How great would it be if you tell your kids the truth about these days and your kids take ownership in it, they tell their other kids and their, these other kids get saved? How great would that be? Would that be worth taking a little heat? Would that be uh, worth saying, I have no good reason? To do this. My, my encouragement, do your own research. Fact check me on everything that we talk about from this pulpit. But do your own research and you'll come to uh, the same conclusion that there's better things to do. Can I get an amen? amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, <laughs> I know that the devil didn't like this message at all, but uh, I could care less what he thinks. Lord, I care about what you think. I pray that you silence his mouth. I pray that this year many, 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 many people will choose, pray many Christians would choose just to be honest about this day with their kids and, and uh, help them realize. Maybe they need to tell their kids that they're sorry for allowing them to participate in this stuff for all these years. God, if that's what you want parents to do, then then lay it on their hearts. Regardless, Lord, we want to be the light of the world. We don't want to conform to the pattern of this world, but we want to be transformed in the renewing of our minds. I, I, don't, want, I don't want my life now to resemble anything like my old days, God. I, 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 I've been forget. I, I spent enough years playing on the enemy's team. I'm not going to do it anymore. And Lord, I pray, I pray that you would make this an easy decision for those that are watching at home or those are here in the sanctuary, maybe they're, they just tuned into the radio station or maybe uh, one of these folks will, will send a link to a friend and just say, listen to this and tell me what you think. God, I, I pray that you would set the captives free and that your hand of favor would be upon them because they're realizing that, that uh, compromise has no place in the Christian's life. We want to be set apart. We want to be consecrated to you. To you alone. God, you're, you're so wonderful. And you're so patient. And you're so merciful. God, would you speak through the power of your Holy Spirit to all of us this morning. And God, not only about Sam Hain and Halloween, but in other things, other areas of our lives where we may be compromising and living by the world's standards and not by the standards that you set before us. So uh, today, God, I, I rededicate my life to serving you and to putting you first in all things and announcing to the world that I have one first love and his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen.